Japan created an entire division of uh, METI called Cool Japan. It's, it's literally called Cool Japan. Now, and it's not, you know, I'm taking a, a mocking tone, but it's actually quite serious. And what they attempted to do was they looked at how well Japanese manga and anime was doing around the world, outside of Japan. It, it's, it's, a, it's a mega hit. It's a mania. But this is not a bad impulse. I mean, Japan Not a bad cool. impulse. Yeah. And they were thinking, what if we could move away from making stuff to actually having soft power by content? And so isn't this content what people already love? And even to the degree that tens of thousands of Americans go to places like Ohio, to OhioCon, where they'll dress up as characters from manga and anime. It's called cosplay, costume play. And, and so they said, my god, they love us. This is what we'll do. We'll create a whole new $200 billion economy, they put a number on it, by the year 2020 around people dressing up in costumes and enjoying anime and manga outside of Japan. Well, the problem with that is not the passion people have for it. It's just that what one professor in Japan has called culturally odorless, meaning that by the time it gets to another country, you like the dress up, you like the anime, the manga, but you don't necessarily associate that with Japan anymore. And so the revenues don't come back to Japan. In fact, many countries like Korea and China are making their own version of anime and manga and doing quite well by that indigenously. So how you can bank on a $200 billion pop in the economy on cool is quite tough. Japan needs a China strategy. They had one in the 30s. It didn't work out so hot. But they have not had one since, OK? <laughs> You know, I remember in the, in the late 80s uh, and early 90s, you'd pick up the Nikkei, and about twice a year, there'd be this great little bar chart that showed where the US economy was going, sort of growing at 3%, and how the Japanese economy was growing at that time, at sometimes 7 or 8%. And the debate was where those lines would cross. China wasn't even on the graph. Well, that turned out to be the wrong graph. They needed China strategy. And they need a China strategy that figures out what is it about Japanese innovation, Japanese products, Japanese quality that gives them an inherent edge and focus on that. Because just focusing on stopping Japanese products from coming in or companies from investing, Chinese products from coming in or stopping investors from investing in China isn't going to work. If Japan stays on its current course, it's the Portugal of the Pacific. It doesn't need to be that way. It has the talents to do far more than that. But it needs both an economic and a political mission that the country can get behind to do so. Devolution. The country's government is too centralized. We have problems maybe on the other extreme here with federalism, with too much maybe power in states and so on. But I'll tell you, you got to devolve more power to the people who have their feet on the ground, who know what's going on. And the one-size-fits-all approach of the Japanese bureaucracy, we see it in Tohoku. What, what Minami Sanricho needs and what Ofunato needs and another city needs are different. And the bureaucrats, despite their best intentions in Tokyo, they don't know. It's the people at the local level. They need a major restructuring of the relationship between the center and the periphery, the center and local areas. Third, and it's actually related, they need more, they have to go back to the point about deregulation. There are simply too many controls, again, emanating from the center, that limit the opportunities for innovation, for taking initiatives. You cannot, in, uh, in Miyagi or in, or in Iwate, do things that you know you want to do as a local leader because of, of the regulations coming from, coming, from, uh, coming from the center. The problem with Japan is that the country has been in the doldrums for 20 years or so, uh, but you know the unemployment rate is half of what it is in the United States. Uh, the living standards are high. There are, there's growing income disparity, but nothing compared to the obscene income disparities that we see in our country. Uh, you saw in Tohoku, people take care of each other. Local communities are strong. 
So if you're a Japanese, yeah, you wish things were better, but is it really so bad? For a lot of people, it's not so bad. And it may be that the only way it gets better is if it gets so bad. And I hope that does, you would hope that, that's where political leaders come in. They have to explain that we cannot let that happen. No one wants to do that, whether you can accomplish it or another issue. Japan is often criticized for being ossified in its own traditions. It's, um, it's often criticized in many other ways. And these kind of changes, the modernization and the uh, influences from outside, but more that growing curiosity from within. So you're seeing these young chefs bring ideas in, or you're seeing young business people go abroad, train, um, learn English, although some of the essays in the book have pointed out that there's less hunger for that at the moment than there has been in the past. But slowly, those kind of um, openings to the outside world yield results. And I think, you know, what's happened in cuisine uh, can and is to an extent happening in other fields of, um, of the society. So for all those who would like to see Japan not just continue but thrive and, um, you know, modernise itself and uh, improve on so many fields that... Um, in the past, it has demonstrated some prowess in, and, and I think in the last 10 years, 20 years, maybe have fallen off a bit. Um, you know, you can see that that's why we need to reimagine it. That's why Japan needs these external influences. It would be a shame if Japan didn't reimagine itself, and, and as some of the people in the book said, you know, fade to obscurity. I think the reason why is because uh, the country does have a, a lot to offer. I think it's important uh, for Japanese people to um, want to succeed and capture uh, some of the glory that the country um, uh, had in its past. And it's also important for the rest of the world. As far as what, what should be reimagined, I mean, there's obviously lots and lots of topics, but uh, I do think that uh, the theme that comes again and again and again is uh, really about leadership. It's, uh, it's at every level, uh, political leadership, business leadership, entrepreneurial leadership, uh, the idea, uh, if, 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 if Japan can figure out how to recapture the ability to lead, uh, that's probably the single biggest uh, theme, and right now the single biggest thing that's lacking in the country. Uh, and from, then, every, from there, everything else uh, should follow.